welcome to Gethsemane Lutheran Church for our Sunday morning worship service. Our mission is to be engaged by God in a living faith at home, at church, and in the world. And we hope that through these services, we help you to be part of that mission. We encourage you to connect with us through our website at glconline.org and let us know how we can help you on your journey. Now, let us worship together. Welcome to Gethsemane's online worship. We give thanks that you have joined us, and wherever you are, whenever you are watching this, that you might be engaged in God's grace and in a living faith. We miss seeing you and seeing your faces, and to this end, we invite anybody who would like to participate in helping with our online worships to record parts at home. If you are interested, please connect with us at the church office through email. We want to let you know that our next Sunday, June 28th, is our next drive-in worship services. As the relaxing of safety guidelines through the CDC, we're now inviting people, if they wish, to sit in lawn chairs in the front third of the south parking lot. Anyone who wishes to do so, we invite to park in the east lots, and then our parking and seating attendants will guide you. There's plenty of spaces for those who'd like to remain in their cars, and self-isolate during our worship. Each section will be invited to flow through to receive communion at the close of worship. And remember, if we have a, worship, a weather delay, the following Monday evening will be the makeup time at 6.30. But watch for announcements. We always cherish the signs of grace messages that you send in to the church office or email, or, and we can invite you to do so with our hashtag GLC signs of grace in our social media feeds. Reminders that Vacation Bible School is happening every Wednesday evening at 6.30 in our south parking lot, and all members are invited to come and be a part of that wonderful experience. There is an online worship aid for our service today. If you printed it off, we invite you to take that out at this time as we begin our service with our opening hymn. Thank you. 
us pray. Heavenly Parent, thank you for staying with us when the work and the words seem difficult. Help us to trust your call in our lives, to work for peace in the midst of divisions, and trust that the family of Christ is bigger than we can imagine. Help us to hear your tender words of love and mercy assuring us, and stirring within us a desire to do a new thing in the world and make a difference that lasts. We are tired, afraid, and uncertain at times, and need gentle reminders of your love. Amen. The Gospel today is from the 24th verse of the 10th chapter of Matthew. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house of Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Father in heaven." Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father and daughter against her mother and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Two years ago, many leaders in the Minneapolis Area Synod, including Gethsemane's church staff and council, read a leadership book called Canoeing the Mountains. The book challenged leaders to think about new ways to be the church in a world that no longer placed the same value on old systems and old programs. The author used the example of Lewis and Clark encountering mountains on their exploration of the American West. And suddenly, all of their tools, all of their equipment, and their past experiences were no longer helpful for their journey. Clearly, they needed to adapt, or their journey would be over. The book was beneficial two years ago as Gethsemane's leadership wrestled with the difficult reality of being church in a world where church attendance was in decline among all major mainline denominations, a world where many of our traditions and old ways of doing things didn't seem to appeal to a younger generation and in fact alienated or was off-putting to some, and a world that expected the church to speak out and stand up to all kinds of injustices. We've continued to look for new tools and try out new models of being the church to keep us engaged with our neighbors and yet faithful, be faithful to our history and the values that have shaped us. But it is now in these very unusual times when every organization, every school, every workplace, every community is being called on to be creative, to be virtual, to be relevant and forward thinking that we are especially called to ask the difficult questions about our mission and ministry 
and to do work that has never been done before. There is no doubt about it. We have been forced to canoe mountains. And if we aren't willing to figure out new ways to cross that mountain pass, well, we're going to be stuck. We are in good company in this uncharted territory. The church has been forced to evaluate and change directions many times over the course of history. And so even though it feels like we are all alone at times, trying to define and redefine our vision and mission in order to be relevant right now, there's comfort in knowing that others have traveled this road before. The gospel passage that is assigned for today is but one example where Jesus calls the disciples to something new. And like us, they experienced a few growing pains and some anxiety about the mission that was laid before them. Jesus is sending the disciples out to teach, heal, preach, and spread the good news of the kingdom of God. The first part of his sending included all the specifics that they needed for their trip. He told them what to bring, where to go, and exactly what to do when they arrived. This first set of survival tips were particular to the mission that was before them at that exact time. But today's gospel passage is full of direction that can be applied more broadly to a rapidly changing mission field. The tools that Jesus offers here can provide disciples across multiple generations help to navigate the uncertain terrain that we inevitably find ourselves in as we work to be church into a particular community at a particular time that is always changing. Some of Jesus' suggestions for the early disciples offer wonderful direction for us right now, all of these years later. To begin with, Jesus was calling on his disciples to change long-standing traditions and ways that people viewed God. This required them to shift their own priorities as well. The early disciples were called to speak out against the idea that they could earn their salvation and that it was limited to some select group of insiders. They were to proclaim that following Jesus wasn't about gaining recognition and respect, but instead to urge people to be humble and to be servants of all. We are also called on to change some of the traditional ways of being the church. We have been offering online worship only since the middle of March. And while we had plans at some point to create an online presence, the pandemic forced our hand into offering something immediately. As we watch the analytics for these new virtual worship services and Bible studies, we can tell that almost 30% more people are engaging in worship and learning events than in the days when we gathered exclusively in the church building. We have figured out new ways to safely offer communion, host a memorial service, and Bible school. And through it all, we have been reminded that church is not dependent on a building, and we are committed to continuing our virtual offerings even when we are able to gather safely in person. Next, we encounter Jesus sending out the disciples with his authority over unclean spirits. He equipped them to cure every disease and every sickness and to preach good news to the oppressed. Similarly, we are sent. We are sent with his authority. These days it has become especially important for us to use that authority to name the disease of injustice and to cast out the unclean spirits of discrimination, hate, and intolerance. We are called to build neighborhoods and partnerships that create economic justice that leads to family stability, health care, and sufficient income for all of our neighbors. We are called to speak with the authority of Jesus to address public health issues that plague our community, like homelessness, poverty, and unemployment. Like Jesus' disciples, we are sent out, not necessarily to bring people to us for our carefully 
and expertly designed programs and creative ministries so that we can fill our building, but instead we are called on to bring Jesus into the neighborhood. We are called to breathe the authority of Jesus into the world by critiquing systems, structures, and individuals that get in the way of spreading a message of love and care for all of God's children, and to work on new ways of serving in our community. Additionally, there was an urgency that was present in Jesus' ascending that feels particularly present in our times as well. There is no doubt that COVID-19 created a sense of urgency for the church to respond differently in the world with new ways to gather and new ways to be in community. But so has the public outcry for racial justice in response to George Floyd's recent murder and the public affirmation of equality for our GLBTQIA siblings in this week's Supreme Court decision demanding fair treatment for all people in the workplace regardless of their sexual orientation. There is no doubt that our old systems and our old ways of being the church are being challenged on multiple fronts these days by these urgent calls in our midst. And we must employ new ways to be with and be for God's people. Jesus acknowledges right up front that as we respond to the urgent calls to renew and restructure, that we will often be met with opposition and division. You see, the work of creating God's kingdom on earth is more subversive and even more controversial than simply being nice all the time. Jesus is calling for us to expand our view of what makes a family. It is not enough for us as individuals or as the church to surround ourselves only with those who look and think just like we do. We cannot seek refuge in, in old ways of doing things that exclude some people while giving unfit power and privilege to others. Jesus sends his disciples out into the diverse crowds and it is the richness of that diversity that helps to reshape families and churches. We must follow the disciples' lead here. There is no doubt that it is difficult work to canoe mountains or to reimagine a new uncharted path forward into a rapidly changing world. And yet, Jesus urges in this passage and in many other places throughout Scripture, have no fear. Have no fear, he said. Everything that is unclear and uncertain now will eventually become known, Jesus says. We should not fear those who lash out at us for doing the best that we can to proclaim Jesus' good news from the housetops. We should not let our fear of what others will think of us or what they will tweet about us or what they will post about us or how they will respond to us hold us back from creatively engaging new ways to make Jesus known in the world. Instead, he urges us only to worry about how God sees us, for we are beloved, we are cherished. God loves the tiny sparrows, Jesus explains, and yet we are even more lovable and valuable than many sparrows in God's eyes. Even the hairs on our head are known and counted. We have value in our very being that is not dependent on our right actions or our religious purity. We are known and loved. In fact, we are known and loved like all people because we are all created, each in our unique ways, in the image of God. And it is from that place of love acceptance and inclusivity that we are being called forth right now in these times much like the disciples of a long time ago without a clear map or step-by-step -step instructions to encounter the changing world all around us but when we trust in God's self-giving love poured out for us even though we are unworthy we can see that God's love is also poured out for all of God's children. And proclaiming that love 
is our due north, even in uncharted territory. And so, my dear siblings in this mishmash family of Christ, the mission field may look different than ever before, but we are still called and sent to deliver an urgent message of God's love to a world in need. Amen. Let us pray. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted. Console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are, including the friends and family of Rashad Brooks and George Floyd, who died recently in the hands of police. Guide, protect, and empower those who protest against inequality and prejudice, and advocate to reform our systems of government to embrace tolerance and justice for all. We know that there are many good police officers who are deeply saddened by recent events. We pray for all law enforcement officers, firefighters, EMTs, and others who attend to public safety. And in our community, we ask you to support and strengthen the Hopkins Race and Equity Initiative and help us all find ways to make a difference on these important issues in our own ways. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. On this Father's Day, bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Help us all to recognize our part in keeping our beloved Minnesota lakes, rivers, and wooded wetlands clean. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Gracious God, your word is very near to us. Help us to build up your church and keep it faithful to your word and make our witness to your love strong and clear. We also remember our sister congregation in Glacia Concordia in El Salvador. And in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we ask that you uphold those who are sick, injured, or who will die this day, and those who care for them. We pray for those suffering from mental illness, addiction, and particularly those physically ill or hospitalized, especially Jim Books. And we pray for those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Arlen Fisk. Hear all those we lift up to you in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Lifting our prayers before God, we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but, deliver but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the, the power and the and glory, glory forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Receive God's blessing. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, 
nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen.